Hi, hi, I spoke to you before. Yes, How are you? Hang on, where did I meet you? We, were, we spoke the at the Baptist, the Baptist thing. thing. Yes, indeed. Yes, that's right. And I've caught up with the show now, so we can talk about it, but we can't talk about it because it's spoilers. Oh, uh, no. I think I just gave some spoilers before by accident. Yeah. Who did you anyway, give them to? I'm not, not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations on the show, season two and season one. It must have been a real nice surprise, the success of the show, and not just in the UK, but across the world, where people have consumed it on Netflix. I really, they've really taken to it. That must have been such a such a joy. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, very surreal. I really didn't think that the show was going to land uh, in that way. So um, sort of, I don't know. I kind of felt like only my mom had kind of watched it, and then suddenly it was like loads of people wanted to talk about it, and it's just been it's just been a lovely year. Yeah, and, uh, does that, I presume that gives you more pleasure going into a season two, but I guess it's good pressure in that you've got a fan base and they're looking forward to whatever you decide to do. Is that does that give you more pressures, or is it kind of a good challenge? in a way to, to bring a season two to life? There's definitely a bit more pressure because I think uh, you just don't want to let people down. But um, I also started writing series two before series one came out. So I think that kind of kept me in a bit of a bubble in terms of just wanting to tell a story that I wanted to tell and trying not to think about it too much. Yeah, And uh, the great thing about the show, I mean, it, it looks fantastic and it has this kind of American edge, but it's the intimacy and the characters that make it work. And I guess without that, it, it wouldn't really work. I mean, was that important to you that you, even if it did look stylized, that the, the characters and the intimacy was, was kind of the central core of the of the show. Yeah, I think really just having the combination of this sort of very heightened world where you can believe that a teenager is giving out sex advice in a toilet cubicle, but with a real kind of human truth. That was sort of what I wanted to get at. And I think that, uh, I mean, hopefully we sort of tread, tread the line between those two things and sort of have a nice balance of humour and heart. Yeah, and we're obviously in the 21st century, we live in a world where these things are still being talked about in like they're taboo or they're, they're you know, yeah. talked about in, in hush tones, all this kind of stuff. But your show amplifies it in such a great way. I mean, that must have been so important to you that in, now in 2020 that we're talking about subjects that 10, 20 years ago we, we weren't talking about at all. Yeah, I think it's just trying to bring some of that stuff to the surface and, and really at the heart of the show it's just about communication and honesty and, and um, trying to talk to each other more, trying to have more human connection and I think that, I mean, the world could just do it a bit more of that, couldn't it, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Absolutely. And just finally, I mean, what would you say to fans that are watching that can I can expect from, from season two? Um, I think that series two feels a little bit bigger, we've, we've added some new characters um, and you know, it very much still follows Otis's journey and the tension between his mum and his friendship with Eric, but uh, but it slightly feels, you know, a little bit bigger and like we've kind of expanded a bit. Yeah, I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, I, do. I enjoyed it immensely, so congratulations. Thank you so much for your time again. Pleasure to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice.